What's going on everyone? Kami here and 1.7 is upon us. HRX Trem? Trem? Oh, a HRX Trem. I get it now. Uh, I totally knew that. But the patch notes are out and I think they're going to be skipping the review over on the video. You know what I mean? The stream, the patch preview. That's the word I was looking for. So I figured I'd make my own little patch review for you. Update 1.7 will kick off the final rank split of season two. This will include a soft matchmaking reset, new qualifying matches, leaderboard wipe, new split rewards, reward for playing 25 games, reward for finishing your placement matches, all the basic stuff that you would expect from a new season. But remember it is a split, it is still season two. The people that are ending in this first split of the top 100 players or grandmasters and the top three of each champion leaderboard will receive crystals. I will say that these crystals seem a little bit lackluster. For GM, first equals 2,500 crystals, and that's not bad, but how fast it degrades is kind of scary. Second is 1,500 crystals, third is 800, fourth through 10th is 400, and 11th through 100th is only 200 crystals. And while you might say, yeah, but Kami, they're not even at the top of the GM boards, they're still GM. They're still top 100 in the world, and it seems a little meh to say, oh, you're the 90th best person in the world in our rank system for our game? Here's a couple bucks. Eh. To be fair though, you gotta imagine that if we crank up the 11th through the 100th reward pool, that's a lot of people. And even going from 200 to 400, for example, that's an extra 20,200, math, it's a lot more crystals. And the individual champion leaderboards, first place gets 400 crystals, second gets 200, and third gets 100, kind of math there too. Maybe they can find themselves a new type of reward they can get, maybe a free skin or something along those lines would be very cool. Something for the players to say, look at me, I was the top in GM, or I was the top in a certain champion, it would be very cool. Speaking of looking cool, HRX Digital Loot Pack is going to be released in the new patch. It's going to cost 800 crystals and the first one is going to be Buckulees, showing here on the screen. It kind of reminds me of like a Tyra-esque buck but it's still buck. Yeah, that makes sense. And then another skin for Maldamba. I think Maldamba's gotten a lot of skins, but still this one looks pretty sweet and it's Na'Vi. If it didn't have the Na'Vi logo in the background, I don't think I would know that it was Na'Vi. Still looks pretty cool though. I would think of more of like a cheetah or a jaguar skin. And a new mount, Molten Prowler. It looks cool. I don't know how it's gonna look actually in game. I hope it's got half of its body. Please don't be another overgrown shrimp. And please don't be so bulky and awful to run with that you can't even hide behind corners without your butt sticking out. Also got a brand new chest coming into the realm, cyberpunk chest. Woohoo, more chests. This chest is going to cost 125 crystals and you can get a wide array of things that are already been in the game like Strix Infiltrator, Knessa Cutthroat, Sky Chrome, the Knessa Buster Rifle, a bunch of things, emotes, MVP skins or MVP poses voice packs. But the two I wanted to cover mainly is the Koga prototype, which kind of reminds me of the skin of Eevee, my favorite skin, where it looks retro. I think it looks pretty sweet. And the Grok Neon Demon. It fits the theme of the chest, but it makes me wonder why are they offering a skin that you were supposed to get in a battle pass now available just to buy with the crystals? I don't know. Like, is that good? Is that bad? I'm curious what everyone thinks about that. Do you like that they're making it so the Neon Demon is possible to get it now and not just only through the battle pass system? It's nice for people that weren't able to grind through it at the time, but it also diminishes the coolness, you could say, of the people that got it during the battle pass. I don't know. Let's move on over to balance. Balance, there's some few things that I agree with and some things I wish that would have been changed. First one is Androxus with Defiance. It no longer passes through Power Siphon and Reversal, which means you just can't punch through an Androxus Reversal or punch through a Terminus Power Siphoning. And I don't think that the Reversal punching through is going to matter that much, especially in Ranked, because you're not going to be punching another person with Reversal because that's two Androxus and that's not allowed. But Power Siphon is a thing that I've noticed a lot with Terminus is when a Terminus throws up a Siphon, I'll just see an Androxus run in and punch the crap out of him. And then he essentially will have his Reversal up by that time if, you, if the Terminus wants to res and Androxus just seems like such a hard counter to Terminus. And while I'm okay with counters and hard counters, it just felt weird and unrewarding just being able to punch through it where the Terminus really couldn't do anything except try to swing back at him. So I like this change. And now the Defiance is now properly classified as area of effect damage and they added a 0.5 second cooldown so you can't just spam the crap out of it. Okay, okay, like that, like that. Next one is Dredge and Dredge is something that I know a lot of people wanted to see nerfed and the nerfs coming his way. Some of them are okay, I like that. Some of them are, mm, I don't know about that. Maybe could have been changed differently or why didn't this thing get changed? Harpoon, reduce the harpoon's ability to interrupt your in-hand fire, which essentially means you can't left-click, throw a harpoon, left-click, throw a harpoon. 
And then now it also gets classified as an area of effect damage. So remember the harpoon is now area of effect since it can go through people. The talent abyss spike, the trigger radius has been increased to 66% and the explosion radius has been increased to 16%. I still think the talent is pretty meh, but it's nice that they buffed it. So it's maybe something. <laughs> Hole piercer now reduces the cooldown of the harpoon by one second instead of what it used to do, which is I believe give the wrecker effect on the harpoon. This essentially makes the harpoon build a little bit less good against tanky builds. And they're also doing this so that it allows people to get a little bit of the talent where you can have infinite harpoons while not having that talent. Albeit having five seconds off the cooldown compared to having just a zero second cooldown is still a pretty big difference. And Cursed Weaponry now only grants ammo on successful harpoon hits. This just makes it so you can't left click Q. They, they really toned down the left click Q. The problem is when it, when it first came out, I thought Hurl was going to be the most OP. But, but the scuttle, the, the reload with zero damage drop off is nuts. And I'm sad that they didn't look into that at all. Furia in flame. Furia will no longer generate ultimate charge from dealing damage while under the effects of her ultimate, which is probably pretty nice. I mean, you gotta think she gives extra damage to everybody. And if she has maxed out healing charge, she's gonna be doing massive amounts of damage. And I wouldn't be surprised if someone could get 50% of her ult back while her ultimate is going on. So I think this nerf was okay. I think his nerf was good. Lex the Law now properly classifies as area of effect damage. Sky has received a buff with her wrist crossbow, which is essentially just her left click. They reduced the damage fall off and increased the base ammo by five. So this just makes it so you can be a little bit more effective at mid-range. It still doesn't tackle the big problems with her, and that's her escape ability and her squishiness, but they're just making her more and more into a glass cannon. And glass cannons aren't fun to play up against. You either get melted or you melt them, and you're like, wow, that was really easy, or wow, I had no chance there. I really wish that they would shy away from the whole stealth mechanic, but Sky has been in the game for so long, and she's just a stealthy character. Maybe they just need to find a better balance between her HP and her damage to make this so the stealth isn't that big of an issue, and she's just a fun champion to play, and she's viable. Probably never will happen though. Vivian updated the booby trap description to display correct amount of damage dealt. I would go ahead and, and venture that the damage dealt is probably booby or booty. Sorry. Bug fixes fix an issue where taking damage on certain resolutions would move the player's HUD slash UI. That was hilarious. I saw that on a lot of streams and YouTube videos, but I'm glad that they fixed that. They improved the death animations in spectator and fix an issue in spectator where the camera would clip into walls when viewing someone in third person perspective. A little bit of spectator fixes here and there. And that HUD thing is huge. Cassie fixed an issue where exaction wouldn't apply the bonus damage to the crossbow shot after the dodge rolling. Never came across that issue and I still think it's crazy that if you dodge roll and shoot a shield a bunch of times and then finally hit your first shot that isn't hitting a shield, you'll still get the bonus damage. You'll still lose it if you miss a shot, but still if you connect every shot and you start off by hitting shield and then you hit a person, the bonus damage will still be there. I still think it should just be the first shot and that's all. Drogos fixed an issue where Drogos' collision cylinder was incorrectly moving with Drogos' body while using certain abilities and by certain abilities they mean just flying around in circles. I hope this fix goes to the dread, the, you know, the the Abyssal Lord one, because we, I don't know if anybody saw my Knessa video where I was shooting right through the Drogos, and I'm sure a lot of people have had those frustrating moments where you're just like, man, I swear I hit that Drogos. You probably did, but the hitbox wasn't where it actually showed. I also want to point out the fact that they use the term cylinder, as in collision cylinder, which means the hitbox of Paladins is a cylinder. It is not a mesh hitbox like Overwatch. That's why things feel clunky in this game. You're literally shooting at different lengths of cylinders attached to form a human body. Grok fixed a bug where Spare's Domain would amplify damage dealt to the target by allies. That uh, seems a little crazy. Never came across that. Grover fixed a condition with Grover's Vine ability. Sure. Fix a crash condition of Grover's Vine ability. I'll be so happy when they just finally fix it all together. Who knows? Maybe they did. Genos fixed an issue where void gripped enemies would not rotate to show the direction they were facing. Okay. Makoa fixed an issue where Makoa's melee attacks and ancient rage would fail to deal damage. Had that a couple times. Maldamba fixed an issue where you could not heal allies partially obstructed by collision. This has happened so much to me. And it's super noticeable when you have the card that allows you to reduce the cooldown if you miss. So if a target is only having about a half of their body sticking out, you will right click them. You will not see the heal pop up but you will also not see your cooldown get reduced. So you essentially have to wait the whole cooldown while watching your teammate just die. Not fun. And also fix an issue where a player with Wakono's Curse equipped would hit a shield with Mending Spirits and deal no damage to the shield. Don't play Wakono's Curse that much, so can't speak about that. Terminus fixed an issue where reanimating shortly after using Shatterfall would result in an incorrect explosion location, and it fixed an issue where Shatterfall will continue even if you kill Terminus in the middle of the ability. Just a couple of bugs that are nice to be fixed. Victor fixed an issue that allowed Victor to gain infinite ammo. Good job, Hi-Rez, you got it. And Ying fixed an issue that prevented Ying from healing allies through shields when the life exchange talent was equipped. I swear, I thought, I, I'm not crazy. I swear there was many times that I was trying to heal people and it wasn't going through. That makes sense. And that wraps up everything of the 1.7 patch. 
Let me know what you think about these changes or what changes you want to be seen done here real soon, whether it's bug fixes, balances, maybe matchmaking fixes, rank changes, whatever it is, let me know. I'm gonna head out of here. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Oh, that was a fucking 180 no scope, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. I'm not gonna be one of those people who asks you to like and subscribe, so I'm not gonna ask.